Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Delvin GPTV. I'm Brett. In my hands is one of this week's releases. This is Star Wars number 108. Uh, but it's from Star Wars, the original series. This is a very different, interesting idea. Uh, Marvel's celebrating 80 years this year, and they're going back and uh, going through the archives and showing some stuff off. And this is kind of one way of doing it. It's a continuation of the original Star Wars series that I think began, it began a long time ago in a, in a time, in a comic shop far, far away. Let's go with that. Um, it's very different than what's going on now with the Marvel Star Wars. You can see it's got the Legends title underneath it. Uh, so it's a continuation of that OG Marvel series. Uh, different style, different characters, totally different direction, and some crazy stuff that was thrown in there. And, um, you know, it's been a long time since that's been produced. I couldn't even... I Yeah, I mean, I don't... It's been a long time, yeah. And it's, been, it's been a rack far, far away. Um, so... The it's the se it's a sequel in a way to kind of the final stuff that was going on or some of the stuff that was going on, um, yeah it's it's fascinating. So there's like a character called Valance the Hunter who was in there, and while I don't remember any of the stuff and I don't think I was really reading the Star Wars comics at that point, this issue does a fairly good job of catching you up so you don't necessarily need to know that. It feels like an interesting throwback in some ways and moderate in others. Um, it's also got a hell of a lot of people involved in this. So it's got Matthew Rosenberg, there's Giuseppe Camicola, Cam Smith, Andrea Brocardo. There's there's eight chapters overall. Uh, Carrie Gamble, Zay Carlos, Andrea Brocardo, Jan Dersima, Andrea Brocardo, Estefano Ladini, uh, Luke Ross, Leonard Kirk, Chris Sotomayor, Clinton Cowles. Um, and it's... It follows up on this, this storyline called the Crimson Forever. Um, this is called Forever Crimson, um, or the Crimson storyline, or whatever it was actually called. Uh, so this is called Forever Crimson. It has to deal with post Civil War. Darth Vader and Palpatine are gone. Uh, the New Republic's in. There's kind of chaos going on. There was this like weird disease with rocks that kind of remind me of Infinity Stones. Uh, and follow up on that. The the different art styles doesn't really bother me at all. Um, as I said, like the look of it and all that is this really interesting kind of throwback. Um, the writing is very throwback to it. Like the first chapter kind of catches you up on everything. Uh, you know, the thing that sticks out to a lot of '80s comics for me is that there is a lot of dialogue, a lot of talking compared to modern comics. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I actually kind of enjoy it in some ways, and that you know you actually get a read out of it. And doesn't take five minutes, and you can see there's just, there's a not so much there, but there's a lot of, of dialogue bubbles throughout, and again, not a bad thing at all. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, so as a modern comic, I think it captures the retro style really, really well, but it's not beholden to it. Um, when Chris Claremont has come back and, and tried to do his X Men Forever, I thought it was almost too beholden to. Uh, his writing style of the 80s, and I kind of felt it was a drag at points reading it due to that. Uh, what's also great as well is it dives into the history of Marvel's original Star Wars comics with some uh, some cool discussions and insights from some of the, the creators. Um, this is neat. Like, it's definitely one for Star Wars fans. If you maybe just want to kind of check out the retro style of it, you can pick it up and, and get it. Uh, it is $5.99. $5 um, you don't need to really know the original Star Wars stuff. You mm -hmm. should be fine otherwise and, um, and be able to enjoy it. It does a really good job of, of I think, catching people up uh, in that way. So it's, this is one that like, I'm not quite sure if I want to totally recommend it, uh, but I found myself enjoying it way more than I thought I would and was able to follow through more than I would. Um, and I think I appreciated more of the attempts to... Um, to kind of go retro with it than more than anything else. Uh, it's definitely much more of that older style, which, uh, you know, what I grew up right, uh, reading. So go check it out. It's in comic shops now. Uh, there's got a link beneath this video. Put in your zip code to tell if it shops near you. No shop, no problem. We got some affiliate links. There are affiliate links. So we always, uh, so we get a little something of that, but you really should go support comic shops instead. Uh, I want to thank Marvel Vodics up with this review copy. We appreciate it, and thank you for watching. Now, if you're into Star Wars, into comics, into Marvel in general, check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, wherever, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics, and may the Force be with you. 
Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.